There's a ton of excitement happening here at Microsoft Build 2019, and the Build Live stage is no expansion. What's new in Cosmo DB with principal group uh, manager, software engineer, Curl Gavriluk? Welcome. Nice meeting you, Ruth. Uh, very great to be here. Great. So for those in the audience uh, that are new to Cosmos DB, uh, what is it, and when should one use it? Cosmos DB is Microsoft's globally distributed multi-model database service. Okay. It is fully managed. It offers you not only availability guarantees, but throughput and low latency guarantees, which is single digit millisecond latency. And thus, it's a great choice for uh, any application that, requires, that has lots of large volume of data that needs high scale, high performance. It is instantly elastic, which allows you to save a ton of money compared to provisioning uh, virtual machines. Mm -hmm. It is infinitely scalable, so you can go from 100 requests per second to tens of millions of requests per second. And at the same time, it is schemaless, which is great for developer productivity because you can start with any data, you can change it any time. You don't have to predefine schemas as, as we do in traditional relational databases. So it spans the spectrum from you can start small, uh, you can start for free, and you can grow, and you can grow to tens of millions of requests per second for mission critical apps. Great. So I am used to rational databases, uh, but I like the infinite scale of Cosmos. Uh, global distribution, performance guarantees. How should I go about moving my data to Cosmos? And then also, um, how should I design my data model? That's a great question. So first, of course, if your data needs to be highly normalized, if you have very intensive queries, relational data, databases are great. Now, of course, if you need high scale, if you need uh, schema, if, you need, uh, if your data changes, if your data goes at high velocity, that's where uh, you need to start thinking about uh, other databases we offer. And when you move to Cosmos DB, there are a few things that are, we have great documentation about it, by the way, and yeah. I, I'm not going to go to all of it in mm -hmm. depth here, but you can, it's important to think about, one, you denormalize your data. So that all the related data stays together. Mm -hmm. Cosmos DB st stores data in containers, and containers are not tables. Uh, there are much fewer containers, typically. Mm -hmm. And all the related data that you want to query at the same time, or you want to work with at the same time, better to stay in a single container. Uh, I can actually show you right here on the sure. screen. Here I have Earthquakes database that stores Earthquakes information. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, those are actual trees. They're not just tables, right? So you have lots of nesting going on. And yeah. that's great when you want to get in one request, you want to get all the data at once. Yes. You don't need to do multiple requests. And then also, how complete is Cosmos SQL uh, Dalek? Um, and then I look at uh, user voice. When should we accept uh, skip and take um, distinct and other SQL features? That's a great question. So Cosmos DB is a multi-model database. It offers uh, various APIs, starting from open source NoSQL APIs like MongoDB or Cassandra API or Gremlin. And of course, we offer a flavor of SQL, uh, which is a, sub sub a, a some subset and a superset of a SQL that is tuned towards the semi-structured, semi potentially nested data. Um, uh, it's a fairly uh, complete coverage when it comes to queries. Yeah. Uh, and at Build, we're excited to announce that we finally have uh, skip and take. Awesome. Uh, so we have offset in, and uh, we have distinct, <laughs> and group by is just around the corner. Uh, so we keep going, growing and growing. Uh, our, the, the goal here is to offer you full ANSI SQL. Uh, of course, not T SQL, but full ANSI SQL for your queries uh, and SQL statements. Awesome. So I heard you announce APS Smart um, uh, built in Cosmos DB. What is that? about, and then what's it in for the Spark developers? And I look like, uh, and you'll be providing a demo for Spark. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're, it's actually a very exciting thing for us, because now we can take advantage of Spark, a very popular analytics framework, mm -hmm. and bring it into the database. Uh, we're the first database to offer you, first managed database to offer you Spark built into the database, which gives you analytics, rich analytics right there. Uh, and can take advantage of things like native index and other uh, performance optimizations within the database. Um, you can uh, create a Cosmos account with Spark Enable just like before by going to Azure Portal, 
and creating your account or using an ARM template, give it a name. You can select any of the data APIs. And now you can enable Apache Spark. And now you can run your Spark jobs directly in the database. Uh, with Spark, we also off are offering you uh, built-in support for Jupyter Notebooks. Now, these are Jupyter Notebooks, so you can take advantage of the rich ecosystem of Jupyter Notebooks, but they run inside the database. So, and they integrate it in our Cosmos Explorer. So right here, I can create new notebook. And I can use Jupyter Notebooks with any of the Cosmos data APIs. Uh, for example, I can, I can, right here, I can run SQL queries. I can write Cosmos SQL queries directly in the notebook. I can execute them. I can get my earthquakes. Uh, here I have a little more interesting uh, notebook that uh, uses geospatial queries to fetch earthquakes within the vicinity of a, uh, of a location, in this case, Seattle. So let's take a look how safe we are here in Seattle. Uh, there's actually quite a few earthquakes happening all the time, <laughs> uh, in case you don't, didn't know about it. <laughs> and thanks to a rich ecosystem, I can do things like visualizing query results, here visualizing them on the map. And uh, hopefully this impresses on you the importance of using <laughs> globally distributed databases mm -hmm. to stay safe from earthquakes and other disasters. Uh, at the same time, we offer you writing, taking your existing Spark jobs, and many of them are done as notebooks. So taking your Spark, uh, Jupyter Notebooks with Spark and running them as is in Cosmos DB. So here we have one of the uh, Spark jobs that are used by one of our customers, and it does a fairly complex join across multiple Cosmos containers. Uh, it uses Spark SQL right here, and it does a join across the sales data and dimensions spread across multiple Cosmos containers. And Spark SQL runs inside Cosmos DB now, so you can take advantage of the native index. So it's much faster than, and no data movement is required. So you don't have to do lots of uh, requests, fan out to a bunch of different uh, Cosmos partitions from some, somewhere else. It's all inside the database. You can take advantage of other things in Spark ecosystem, like machine learning. So here I have uh, a notebook using PySpark ML that does prediction based on this data. Uh, you can use GraphX. Uh, you can use any of the modules in Spark uh, and take adv advantage of them and run inside database. And it's great because it gives you analytics on your operational data in real time. You don't need to do move data, no need for to do ETL. Uh, and you can take advantage of things like global distribution. You can run your Apache Spark anywhere in the world, collocate it with the database, giving you all those low latencies. You can run these Spark queries on uh, workloads that come at millions and tens of millions of requests per second and still get the same low latency when it comes to queries. Milliseconds for your reads, 10 milliseconds for your uh, loads and 10 milliseconds for your writes, and high availability. So it's all together. We're really excited to see what people are going to do with it. Exciting. Great. Uh, your team invested heavily in SDKs, and I heard you're announcing GA uh, for the new v3.net and Java SDKs this month. Um, what are the main benefits? And then also, what happens to those applications to, you, uh, to, uh, to use the current Cosmos SDKs? So later this month, we are indeed going to announce GA for our, our, our .NET and our Java v3 SDKs, which comes with certain programming model changes. It brings you performance, up to 30% performance. We're actually using the uh, .NET, uh, SDKs in our service, and we were able to save significant cogs thanks to that. Uh, it offers you streaming API. It offers you idiomatic programming model. It uses, in Java SDK, it uses Reactive Framework for async. Uh, Cosmos uh, .NET SDK is now uh, done properly, taking, taking uh, full advantage of all the best practices in .NET today. Uh, it is .NET standard 2.0. It runs on Linux. It performs actually uh, sometimes even better on Linux and on Windows. Uh, and uh, yes, the programming model changes are there. Of course, we're going to support the existing SDKs for a while. And we're going to help customers migrate. We're not going to turn off uh, until customers comfortably migrate. We're going to offer uh, potentially some of the tooling, some of the wrappers to make it easier to take advantage of the new SDKs and new performance gains. Awesome. Um, so global distribution um, across all regions sounds expensive. Um, how much does Cosmo DB cost? Oh, that's all. This has always been our struggle because we cover this large spectrum. Yeah. You can start free. You can run with lots of containers, lots of data, and 
uh, up to uh, 100 requests per second, all under uh, $24 a month, which okay. is not, not high. Not and at the same time, you can go, uh, you can go nuts. You can go across <laughs> 20 regions. You can go run 10 million requests per second workloads. And of course, those cost a little bit more. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a fairly flexible system. The important thing is to take, take a, uh, follow best practices. And we optimized our defaults now so that it always starts with low cost. And you can build and increase as you go, uh, increase the scale or number of regions. Uh, so we, we're doing a lot of advisory to help people save costs. The instant scaling, uh, instant elasticity that you can go up and down 10x in a matter of seconds, that always you need to take advantage of that to save costs because you don't get this with relational databases, you do not get this with other systems. Um, all of these things are there to, for customers to save costs and you can start very low. And we have 30, day, 30 days, very beefy trial with unlimited renewals, uh, up to 20,000 are used, I think. Uh, fairly uh, at try Cosmos DB. So go right here, okay. you can try free, and you get your Cosmos DB for free with lots of capacity for 30 days and with unlimited renewals. With all these new um, announcements happening uh, with Cosmos DB, what's the most exciting for you? I think the most exciting, of course, is Spark and Notebooks because it just opens up such a a rich uh, spectrum of opportunities for developers today. Now you don't have to choose operational database versus analytical database. It's all one and the same. You can run your analytical workloads. And it's, Spark has proven to be such a flexible, scalable analytics framework that we are happy to take advantage of that. Awesome. Are there any more announcements for the developers listening? Uh, lots in? of uh, small things. Take a look at our blogs. Uh, we have details there. Uh, we are doing uh, better tooling. Uh, we have uh, optimized uh, something may go unnoticed, but we reduce the cost of many queries 100x. Um, that's right, it's 100x cost reduction for many of the queries. Uh, and uh, as, uh, also performance of the aggregate queries has improved dramatically uh, with the build uh, deployment. Uh, lots of goodness there. Take a look at our blogs. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Curl. Uh, for joining us, and today we'll see um, we'll see them after the break. Thank you, guys. Thank you.